Thank you very much for the intro. Hi everyone, my name is Sergei Daronichev and I'm Immersive Technology Manager at Schlumberger. I've been working for the company for 14 years already. First 10 years, I worked in our consulting department in oil and gas operations business. This helped me to better understand how it worked. And then I started to apply this knowledge in our technology innovation center in Silicon Valley. And last four years, I've been working on software innovations for oil and gas. Schlumberger is the biggest oil and gas service company in the world. With more than 100,000 people operating in 120 countries, we help our customers to explore new oil and gas reserves and extract it to the surface. Leading such a challenging market wouldn't be possible without strong investments in technology. Thus, we have around 90 R&D manufacturing facilities, and I'm lucky to work in one of them. Our center located in Menlo Park, California, in the heart of the Silicon Valley. And our main role is to be a gateway connecting Silicon Valley ecosystem and the rest of our organization. So we look at new technology, we build quick proof of concept, see if this can bring value to oil and gas business, and then help with its deployment in the company. We work on various topics, including AI, big data, <clears throat> artificial uh, high-performance computing, and many others and of course, immersive technology. In VRAR domain, in the last few years, we've done quite a lot of work. And um, for virtual reality, for example, we had several very successful projects. And these days, Schlumberger uh, already use virtual reality, not only to train our own personnel, but also to provide VR trainings to our external customers. Also, we've accomplished more than 20 pilots with smart glasses and these days, several teams already using it on daily basis in their operations for step-by-step -step instructions and remote assistance. Today, I want to talk about different projects. The engineering name for it used to be Frac Tetris. Frac because of the fracture nature of the business and uh, Tetris because of the things that we're actually doing there. So this is an XR solution that allows you to optimize layout plane procedure which can be used not only in oil and gas, but in any other industry. So let me show you how it looks like today. In this video, you saw a lot of hydraulic fracturing equipment. Schlumberger has a special brand name for that. In the North America, one team is the part of Schlumberger that leads this business. They perform more than 1,000 jobs per year, and they have lots of people involved in that. But let's take a look at one single job, how it looks like. It takes up to two weeks to perform it, and it involves hundreds of people, and around 50, 70 heavy trucks. What I'm trying to say here is just, it's massive. This is how the well site looks normally. It's quite empty, but it's also quite huge. The total area of this uh, picture is around two football fields. In order to start performing the job, this needs to become that. And this requires a lot of efforts, knowledge, skills, and sometimes creativity from our engineers to make this happen. 
You can see here trucks, pumps, containers, pipes, and lots of other stuff. However, everything what you see on this picture is actually mobile. We call this fleet. So we move this fleet from one location to another to perform the job. And it normally takes around 36 hours on average to relocate it from one well site to another. It goes without saying that any delay in this process leads to significant costs to us. However, what can go wrong there? You're just moving trucks from one place to another. But imagine that how many of them are there. And uh, for example, you start performing uh, mobilization of your fleet. You already parked uh, 25 trucks in your new location and it took you five, six hours to do that. Then 26 truck is coming and you observe that there is no enough space for it to make a turn to park correctly. Then you have to actually remove all the equipment and uh, replan it and start doing it over again, which leads to significant negative impact for all involved parties. These days, people are using quite traditional approaches. They use meters, they use step counts, they also use different software, and uh, you cannot really imagine how people can be creative by using paintbrush or PowerPoint and of course, uh, favorite Excel for everyone. In many cases, that's good enough. However, quite often you don't have too much free space in your location. So you need to have very precise, accurate plan for this. We introduce completely new workflow. These days, a field coordinator comes to the field earlier and then run a drone, which goes and automatically in five, 10 minutes scan the environment. It generates geotiff image. So it's the same image with the location, but each coordinate has, uh, each pixel has its own coordinates. Then it goes directly to our 3D collaborative environment where multiple people located in different places can collaborate to recreate the most ideal uh, layout for this particular job. They can connect from tablets, from uh, laptops, and from virtual reality headsets. Then the results of this work goes back to the field and then field coordinator can use their tablet to visualize augmented reality holograms in exact location. We try different types of visualization. We, you, we can visualize high fidelity models of those tracks. However, then you cannot really see anything beyond the first layer of those tracks. So it's not super convenient. Thus, we ended up to visualizing only parking spots and highlighting them in different colors. So then field coordinator can see the full picture. Plus we can add metadata there saying, for example, that this spot is allocated for track number five and another one is for pump and so on and so forth. Then we send the drone over again, just to check the execution versus plan. For this project, we had to recreate all our equipment in 3D. We tried to use initially our CAD models of the equipment and just optimize it to reduce the number of polygons because initial CAD models, they normally super heavy for that type of experiences. However, quite quickly, we realized that it's much faster and cheaper just to recreate those models from the scratch. So we use drone images or smartphone images of our equipment, and we use uh, detailed documentation to recreate it from the scratch. Augmented reality visualization is the most co complex part of the entire workflow. These days, it's in beta testing mode on several locations. And there are a few things that I want to highlight about that, a few challenges, I would say. First of all, only one person in a field can actually see the layout, the person with an iPad. 
it's not normally an issue because uh, that person can coordinate the others. So they can use their hands to show where to park or they can use a spray, the color with the paint, basically just to highlight the exact positions in the, on the ground. Another challenge is that when lots of equipment is already there, then you start having some kind of occlusion problem because your holograms, they overlap on top of the real objects. But you can address it by increasing uh, transparency of the hologram. So then it becomes much more visible and more convenient for you. And eventually, of course, when you just arrive, you need to ensure that the posi your position is the position that you want. So you need to calibrate your experience. And this is how we do that. So in the first calibration, we're going to lose a position here, and we're going to calibrate from a known point. So if we know where exactly where we are, let's say the start from the well site. So we'll go right to the middle area. You pick your position there, and then you click next, and you pick a direction somewhere you kind of know. We know where the entrance is, so we'll get in that relative direction. You, all you need to do is just get kind of close because once you kind of get into it, you can actually uh, calibrate it again once you are get everything kind of set, if you get close enough. And then just there on the side right there, you can adjust your opacity so you know when you kind of walk through something. Now when you first install the application, you can change the settings there to enable it, you can fix the height. This is how we do that. So on the left side, you can see the image of the work that was done without our solution. And the, on the right side, representation of what, uh, of what we did after that. So look at this. Number one, you see those tracks over there? Yeah, it's kind of, what's wrong with this? Uh, in, those are not simple tracks, those are pumps, and they perform the main part of the work. So they can actually break during that procedure. and. Uh, Imagine that you have to replace one of those trucks. On the left picture, to replace one single truck, you will have to actually remove all the previous ones because there is no enough space for this to get out. On the right side, if they just slightly change the layout, if they just rotate it, and they could do that, but they didn't see it before they actually already made this happen, they would have enough space on the right image. You can see that for every track to move out independently. Number two, you see those containers on the left top side. So those are containers with liquid and there's supposed to be another truck that would daily come there to refill the supplies. On the left image, this is very challenging to do. On the right side, this would be much easier because you would have enough space to do that. And we are talking now not just because it's inconvenient, because it actually leads to delays and some issues in the entire job and potential losses. Finally, at the left bottom part, those white things, so those are sand containers, yeah? And uh, at this moment on the left image, you see two trucks staying nearby and they are apparently unloading the sand right now. However, there is a third one, I highlighted in the red, on the right side of the image, which is waiting for its turn. On the right side, you would be able with this layout to unload four trucks instead of two simultaneously. So we came up with this idea at the end of July in 2018. Just in few months after that, in November 2018, we were already field testing our first prototype in, in the field in real operations. After that, half a year later, it was already deployed fully on several locations in Texas. And since last May, May since May 2019, uh, we already performed more than 200 jobs using this workflow. And today, it's just essential part of their work. And we extend it now beyond Texas to other locations and even to other countries. I want to share some insights with you. So XR is an amazing tool for some of the use cases. And it's very important to choose that use case wisely. XR can really help you and bring value in the, in the places where you need to understand spatial around you. Yeah. So when you choose your use case for your projects, do it wisely. Then don't try to reinvent the wheel from the very beginning. 
check what is already available, yeah, what products you can just get and start using it. So it will help you to very quickly build your own proof of concept and see if this solution would actually bring any business value to you, to your company. So don't wait, just build your first proof of concept. And after that, if you want to build your own solution without third parties, you will be welcome to do that and you will better understand how to do that, what issues you have, what you want to change, what you don't like in other products. And eventually it's super important to find passionate early adapters at your company who would be willing to spend some time and help you with the testing and trying and eventually deploying your product in your enterprise. Thank you very much for your time. I will be happy to answer your questions. Hey, Sergey, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really great to see the work that you guys are doing. And I, th I think you nailed it. Like I, when it comes to AR, just computer vision in general, being able to visualize space just to be able to, for optimization purposes um, is obviously just a, a huge value add. Um, we have time for one really quick question. And I, I had, I just was thinking about in terms of the, uh, the, the workflow. So you're, you're capturing these environments with the drones, you're sending them down to uh, some, some subject matter experts that are kind of organizing the, the environments for the trucks. And in the future, what role is AI going to play in all of that? Oh, yeah, it's a great question, actually. Uh, initially, we actually tried to add some AI part to the entire workflow. Uh, however, we realize that it's probably better to build something quicker with some manual input from users to prove the value of the entire idea. Uh, talking about the future, first of all, we want to use AI for actually to organize those trucks. Yeah, to we already have some templates um, for layout, but the idea is that we will use AI to actually position them correctly based on the on those hundreds of jobs that we already did and the input from from the users. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Um, thank you again for your presentation and um, have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much.